Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do a Will It Woo review of 2025. Basically, we're going to try to install WooCommerce on WordPress's new default theme, 2025. See how it looks, see how it feels. We're not going to go too in-depth with WooCommerce. We're just going to get a general sense. How does 2025 handle WooCommerce out of the box if you want to use the default theme for selling stuff online with WooCommerce? Let's go ahead and dive into the dashboard. We're going to the dashboard there. Plugins, add new plugin, and we're going to install WooCommerce. And this is not going to be an in-depth uh, tutorial on WooCommerce, but maybe if you've never seen it uh, before, uh, this uh, is going to be a nice little sort of walkthrough uh, for WooCommerce. Install, activate. I'm going to give it a moment. I don't know why my dev server is running a little slow today, but I'll just fill it in with words as it loads. So this is the onboarding wizard for uh, WooCommerce. Uh, you can uncheck, I agree to share my data with WooCommerce. You can always skip the guided set, set up up top, but we're gonna follow through each step here so you can see it. Uh, I'm going to say we're setting the store up for a client. It's still gonna ask you some kind of industry. It's going to ask you uh, your location for uh, its tax um, add-on that you can uh, use. We're going to uncheck all of this stuff because I just don't want all the pop-ups and the setup stuff. Uh, this is the four, eight uh, plugins that WooCommerce will recommend when you set things up. Uh, I'm going to click on continue again. Now, we're not going to go through their continued guided set. There's like another one after this uh, where you go through and sort of check off all the things to get WooCommerce set up. We're going to dive straight into creating our first product. Uh, that way we can test the things. Um, and the things we will be testing is the shop page, the single product page, uh, the add to cart functionality, the icons that hopefully load in the navigation uh, of your site and the checkout process, right? Everything except like adding a payment. And then we'll take a look at the templates that we have uh, by default. So WooCommerce is essentially set up. Uh, you could continue to set all this other stuff up, but we're not going to do that right now. We're going to head right to products and make ourselves a, uh, a dummy product. So the first thing we'll do is create a product. I'm going to close that. This is our digital product. And I'm just gonna copy that so I have a bunch of words here. And I'm just doing this word thing just to fill out a bunch of text uh, so that we can see it in the description. I'm gonna put a couple of them here in the short product description. That way, if the theme is using it somewhere, uh, we can kind of see that stuff filled out. First thing I'll do is add a product image. I have a bunch of images here from testing other parts, or I did. Uh, so I'm going to pause for a moment, come right back and add some images. Okay, so we're back and now we're going to add these placeholder images in. This is going to be uh, the primary product image. Then we'll add a few more images uh, to the gallery. We're just going to select these add to gallery. Basically, we want to be able to test that uh, single product image feature and the gallery feature um, that WooCommerce has uh, designed by default. I'm going to call this a virtual product. Um, I don't know why my mouse is doing that right now. We're going to call this a virtual product, and we're going to give it a regular price of 100 with a sale price of 49 I'm not gonna play with any of the inventory stuff. That's largely all sort of like database side. In this video, we're just like doing the touch and feel things. Like what, is, what does it look like? Uh, what happens when we click on things in the front end? So I'm just gonna leave this as it is. I'm gonna hit publish, and this will publish our first product. Um, but before we look at that, let's do one other thing. Let's go to the home page and just see what the home page looks like now that we have uh, WooCommerce installed. So uh, I don't have any other content on the site. This is just a blank install of 2025. It's just defaulted to the um, single uh, archive page uh, for the blog. And you'll see that uh, installing WooCommerce did add to the primary navigation cart, checkout, my account. Uh, sample page was already there. Shop page, uh, and then these account i this this account icon and this uh, shopping cart icon by default. So that is one sort of plus uh, to 2025 is that it does have these icons styled. Uh, you know, looking at this 
really brief. Uh, generally, as tiny as that feature is, it's also something that is like a, a, a no-brainer that some themes just don't have. And that can actually change some, you know, the the beginner to maybe av below average type of WordPress user to say, oh God, it doesn't even have these icons. Every shopping site has have these icons. Uh, I want those icons, give them to me. Uh, WooCommerce added it. 2025 is styling it fairly well there. And, you know, they're kind of already leaning in the direction of, okay, this is this is kind of working, you know, as, as tiny as that, that feature might be. Let's take a look at the My Account page um, first before we get into the product stuff. The My Account page for uh, most WooCommerce sites are going to be the, the, the pages that you go to, you know, to manage those purchases, the downloads that you've purchased, uh, the receipts, the invoices, et cetera, et cetera. And you can see here it's loading just fine. Uh, nothing crazy. It doesn't look amazing. You might kind of not even feel that you're in an account dashboard. Uh, so those are the things w that make or break um, the, the major differences between a theme that is made for WooCommerce versus something like 2025 that simply just works with WooCommerce, right? That's, that's the difference, right? If you're finding a theme that is specifically tailored to WooCommerce, well, your account dashboards are probably going to be styled just a little bit. I mean, nothing crazy. You don't need like over-engineering on the design with this stuff, but this is kind of just loading in the middle of the page, you could kind of like not even realize you're in a very important screen. That's what that's what I see here. Anyway, at, at least uh, at first blush. So we take a look at orders. We're not going to have anything in orders. Um, my testing site is really slow today. Uh, no order has been made. You can go directly to browse products. The uh, little warning or information box looks fine, uh, styled well. It's very clear and uh, indicates what you're supposed to do. Account details, we'll just take a look at that uh, just so we can see the input fields and the forms. This looks okay. Um, you know, certainly it could be styled a little bit more, uh, especially for understanding like the form sections and the form input fields. But, you know, the account details, the account settings page, my account page looks largely fine. Like you could get away with this. And I think at the end of the day, where I see 2025 fit is like, if you're going to sell a few things with WooCommerce on your 2025 site, I think it's going to work for you. If you're trying to do like a whole online retail space, uh, I would definitely look uh, at a different theme that's made for WooCommerce. But we're here to see if it will woo. And so far, it's wooing, right? Is that a thing, <laughs> Is that a thing we can say? Um, let's go to the shop page. Moving right along from the account details. Um, the shop page will be where all of our products are. Um, as I mentioned, we've only installed one or we've only added one product. Um, you can really start to enhance the shop pages with, um, you know, refining categories, with doing different layouts and stuff like that. But we're just focused on, you know, a handful of products here. And as I look at this, my sample product looks fine um, because I do have a discounted price, it automatically tags it as a sale. That's the functional side of WooCommerce saying, hey, if it's discounted, label it as a sale. And then the design side, the interface side would be the theme. And the theme is, you know, putting that label there fine. Like it doesn't break on some themes that don't support it, it might not look as good as, as this. Um, the price, uh, the retail price, this is our digital product, the retail price, this I could definitely see um, wanting to be styled a little bit better. Kind of on the small side, uh, especially if you're browsing this, um, you know, with many products, you're really hunting for that that product price. I might enhance that. I'm going to show you the templates as we progress here, uh, where you can uh, potentially make those changes. But just out of the box, I'd, I'd say it's a little too too, uh, too small for my liking. Uh, the default sorting is also not styled that well. Uh, this is kind of like just the default browser system style. Uh, you know, I don't I don't use tiny, tiny little thing here, but, uh, you know, I would like to see something just a little bit more enhanced there. Okay. For that, for that matter, let's punch into, uh, the single product itself. I don't want to add it to the cart just yet. I'm going to click on, um, the product image and that'll bring us to the product page that we made. Remember we loaded up all of those images before you can see up top, uh, all these images are loading fine. The gallery clicks through, uh, without issue. We've got the sale call out from discounting the price. We have the magnifying glass that we can click on to enhance those images. 
working quite well for me. Nothing, nothing really wrong here. Um, this is our digital product. Uh, that's the title. We can see the price point again, discounted from that 100 down to 49, add to cart. We didn't give it a category. All of this stuff is largely loading fine. Uh, and again, I would say that, you know, working with 2025 and WooCommerce, so far so good. I don't see anything truly broken here. We go to reviews. Uh, let's just test the review. So we'll give it five stars. This is a five star. Uh, don't know if I really love this interface. This could be cleaned up uh, a little bit more, but again, functional with no broken um, images or, or layout. When I apply my review, everything looks good. Uh, one review for this product, five stars, and my comment. So, you know, everything's working just fine, in my opinion, on the single product page. You might want to enhance this depending on what you're selling and what you're doing with your brand, but again, no, no big issues here. We're going to add to cart so we can see that add to cart functionality happen. Let's click on that. And when we add it to the cart, this says, uh, this is our digital product. This is the name that's I, what, I, what I made. Has been added to your cart. Notification message, fine. You'll notice up top the icon for the shopping cart. Updates with a little one uh, notification. That looks great. I can click on view cart. Uh, so I'm gonna, instead of clicking this, I'm gonna click the icon and that'll pull it out in this tray, which looks really good actually for 2025. I don't see any real problems with this. Uh, it would probably look really good on mobile as well. Uh, so we can go straight to checkout or view my cart. Uh, let's go view the cart. And here, uh, no issues uh, on this page. Everything looks really good. It's probably the, the best layout for uh, what 2025 is producing for uh, a WooCommerce page, in my opinion. You have the nice save $51 from uh, the automatic uh, formula that it does by discounting the product. And when we add this stuff in, I could add in 10 of these products. It's gonna calculate that savings, save 510. Again, nice functional feature from WooCommerce, nice visual feature from the 2025 theme. I have no issue with this. Pricing loads clearly uh, and everything's updated uh, nice and easy, okay? So let's proceed to checkout. And on the checkout page on the right-hand side, uh, the sort of like continuation of the, uh, of the shopping cart uh, looks great. The left-hand side where you're actually placing in all of your information, it's okay. Uh, I, have, I have no real problem with it, though I would like it styled a little bit better. Um, to make the sections clearer, to make, um, you know, the, the typography a little bit clearer. I find, <clears throat> you know, the um, sort of preset information in these or the labels inside these uh, input boxes a little too too big. You know, it shrinks down when you click into it to focus on it. That's not bad. Uh, but I just feel like there's just a lot of text right here. And I think with a few touches to the UI, you can kind of like clean this up visually, but otherwise it works. And again, if you're using 2025 to sell just a handful of things, I don't think you're really going to stress out or, or have people too confused um, with this process, right, on the checkout page. I don't have a payment processor set up uh, here, so I can't continue to place the order. Um, but all the way up until this point, I think we're okay. We're, we're safe when it comes to uh, will it woo with 2025 theme. Okay, let's go to the dashboard. I wanna look at the templates that we have so we can get an understanding of um, what it is we could work with with 2025 and WooCommerce. So we'll go to appearance, editor. We will pull up the, well, let me look at the patterns really quick. Uh, so it did add the mini cart pattern. Um, so the sort of little tray that comes out of the side, uh, we have uh, the mini cart pattern, which is um, you know pulled in from uh, WooCommerce. You can modify this if you want. We can click into this. That'll load that up, and you can kind of customize this or add a little bit more text to it, um, call to actions, seasonal things. You know, especially if you're a um, you know, running an e-commerce store, you probably want that, that type of functionality. Uh, but let's go back to patterns and let me move myself over here so I can see in this. And WooCommerce does add um, a bunch of these patterns uh, when you install um, WooCommerce. It's gonna, it's, it doesn't matter which theme you're really using, it's gonna install it into the, into the theme. These are decent. Uh, like in my other videos, we built uh, 2025 websites using their default patterns. Um, like if we looked at call to action, um, these are default 2025 call to action uh, 
patterns that they've made. Uh, this online store one is probably the one you lean to here. Maybe this pricing page if you're selling like digital products with WooCommerce, but nothing else really in the suite of 2025, again, is, is leaning to a, a WooCommerce site. And I can't fault it for that because it's not made to be specifically a WooCommerce site. Um, but WooCommerce does give you these patterns and totally up to you whether or not you think it fits the aesthetics of 2025. I mean, it's not a huge departure, um, but I would say that's also not geared towards it either. So you might have to play with some of the layouts. But if you were to create, uh, if we preview this, so we can't preview that, we're going to duplicate it. These are all going to come locked uh, so that you're either using them by default or you're going to duplicate them, create your own patterns with them, and then modify these. But this is one that comes from <clears throat> uh, WooCommerce. Not bad. I mean, I think it fits the aesthetics of, of 2025, uh, but you, know, you can be the judge on the design stuff. Let's go back to templates. Uh, and we're going to take a look at just specifically uh, the WooCommerce templates. And you can see we have order confirmation. This is what happens after uh, that checkout process happens. Uh, the cart page, the checkout page, coming soon page, um, product catalog. I don't know why it's doing this little jumpy thing. Um, I don't know if that's a just a weird thing with 2025 with templates or if this is a WooCommerce thing. It's kind of a slightly annoying, <laughs> but we have single product, product tag, products by category, product attribute. So if we went into, let's say, our do, 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 do product catalog page, uh, this is the template that's going to load all of the products on uh, on your shop page, let's say. Um, this is where you would want to come in and modify this, like if you wanted to add in some other kind of like call to action above your uh, product page and like modify this uh, this product page, you can do that here uh, in, uh, in the template editor. I don't want to go through customizing all of this stuff because that's made for a very different type of video, but you can see that if we ex expand these uh, product collection blocks, you can see the product image title, product price. And this is where I had that sort of like complaint, but oh, you know, the price is just a little too small for my liking. We can click on the product price block here, go to the right hand side, maybe make that large, extra large. I would probably go extra large. <laughs> uh, that's just me. And when I save that now, all of those prices on the shop page are going to be extra large, right? And you can modify the look and feel of that stuff right in here. So, you know, you can do that across all of these blocks um, that are not locked. And, uh, it, you know, I think, again, that's how you would shape 2025 into the theme you need it to be for WooCommerce. So at the end of the day, uh, we'll go back to templates just so you can see this. Uh, we'll do one more. Uh, we'll look at, well, let's look at the order confirmation because I didn't get to that because I don't have a uh, uh, merchant setup. Uh, this is what it's going to look like after you make that purchase. Again, this might be another page that you are sort of customizing for your shop where after somebody makes the order and they're presented with this sort of like receipt, you might have another call to action you, uh, you put in here. You know, follow us on Facebook, Twitch, TikTok, Instagram, whatever. Uh, and just know that these templates are all in the site editor where you can edit these and adjust them how you see fit. So as I was alluding to at the end of the day, I think 2025 does woo just fine. Um, not particularly geared for it, though it never set, never promised that it was, that it was going to be. Um, but I always look at these default themes as, well, it's the default theme to WordPress. And I think step one to a WooCommerce site is WordPress first. The thing that WooCommerce will always do is prompt you, even when you're using a, a third-party theme or a theme that is WooCommerce compatible. They're always going to prompt you to install one of Woo's default themes. Slightly annoying. Maybe there's a setting in there uh, to disable that. Maybe a filter or something like that that developers can do when you give it to your client sites. Uh, but this theme, I think, does uh, a fine job. And with just a few adjustments, you'll be on your way to selling stuff with WooCommerce. Let me know what you think. 2025, using it with WooCommerce. What's your favorite WooCommerce theme? Let me know in the comments. Thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you in the next video.